we will continue with the next presentation. Uh, it is a user story given by Paul Hasenhorn from uh, the Joint Research Center, and he will give a presentation in Cop uh, Copernicus Service, the big data platform at GRC. Uh, hello, good afternoon. So uh, I'm going to give a presentation then about the use we are doing of the CDAC and two projects at the, at the GRC in their order activities, but I will just uh, speak about two. One is the big data analytics platform that the team uh, belong to. And another, uh, also some uh, feedback about uh, activities that were all run before on the DIAS and how they have been uh, continuing then on the CDAC. And then the last part of the presentation uh, will be some feedback from the various users of the GRC about their experience uh, and uh, with the platform. So to start with just a few words about the, the GRC, the Joint Research Center. So it is a Directorate General of the European Commission, which purpose is to provide independent, evidence-based knowledge and science supporting EU policies to positively impact society. I mean, the role is to provide, and said differently, independent uh, support to policy making and it's supporting mainly the uh, policy DGs of the Commission. It's uh, located uh, over in uh, various countries, I mean, there are various sites, as you can see, on, uh, in five, uh, five countries. So I'm coming from ISPRO, Italy. So now going to the most in important part, that is the use of CDAC on uh, BDAP. So the BDAP in just in a few words, uh, that's the big data analytics platform. So it's a project that has been starting, I would say seven, eight years ago, I don't remember. Now it's, it's getting uh, quite some time at the GRC. And it's an on-premises small cloud platform that provides data collections and data processing and analysis environments. So it's a small, uh, small scale, uh, of course, regarding the, the data, the storage mechanism that is used is called EOS. It's the storage system that has been developed by the CERN uh, in Geneva. And uh, then the data processing and analysis environments that we, that we have are been varied. You have uh, Jupyter, uh, of course, Jupyter Notebooks, uh, Jupyter, Jupyter Lab. Uh, there, are, there is also a remote desktop, so Xubuntu-based uh, uh, environment, and also uh, an HD Condor environment for uh, high throughput computing. But the point is that all that is provided to uh, the GRC researchers in one single place. Then we need, obviously, to populate it with data. So since the beginning, it's uh, being fed with Sentinel-1, Sentinel-2, and uh, uh, Sentinel-5P uh, data over various uh, areas, of, uh, areas of interest. So here, just to give an idea of where, what we are downloading. That here, what is interesting is then how we, we connect to the CDAC. And the point is what we wanted to do, and we'll see afterwards what we actually had to do. So what we wanted to do, that was, I would say, in theory, simple. We rely on the stack interface. From PyStack, with the PyStack client, we query the CDAC. We download the data and put, store the data in our storage system and store the metadata directly in our Elasticsearch instance. That's what we had dreamed to do. But I mean, at that time it was not possible, but it, it appears that maybe soon we will be able to actually do that. So we are also very happy to see that it's going into that direction. So for the time being, what we have to do is to use a broker that we have already seen in a previous presentation, EODAG. And then we, well, we still store the data, I mean, that's obvious, 
But then we extract the metadata or we create our own stack the metadata out of the metadata that we uh, extract from the, the Sentinel data and we populate then our own, uh, our own catalog. But well, the very good news is that in, let's hope in the close future, then we will not need anymore to have those uh, extra steps. So that will be actually very nice. Then regarding the interactions with the CDAC, what we envisage, apart from changing the, the way of uh, retrieving, retrieving the data as I just explained, another one is that as the data are on the CDAC, it does not make necessary sense to keep downloading all the, all the data as we are doing. So one thing could be first that we reduce the amount of data that we keep on premise, on premises, and that's one option, and or anyhow to be able to seamlessly integrate with uh, retrieve the data that are on the on the CDAC, and that's really one uh, something that we want to uh, at least try this year, so that the data not already available on our own platform would either be downloaded transparently to our storage and, refer and registered in the, in the catalog when it's first accessed by a user, or that's a second way, is that uh, there would be simply an S3, an S3 access uh, direct to the data. But this would also mean that it still has to be transparent for us and we are not providing an S3, uh, an S3 access to our, uh, to our storage. But the point is really that we want to be able to keep a local storage and to be able that users transparently get access to the data that we do not have, but without having to, to do anything special. And that has to be transparent, transparent for them. Then I would say the only question is to know if we take that opportunity to expand that the archive uh, like a buffer or if we don't do that. Then there is another aspect that is the processing and then using uh, OpenEO, there would be also the possibility to try to do some seamless processing, combining on-premises resources with the CDAC OpenEO uh, capabilities. So that's another uh, direction that we want to investigate uh, still uh, this year. And uh, last point that we have is to scale out, so then purely at the level of processing, demanding processing, then from BDAP to the CDSC in uh, IAS, so to Creodias automatically. So that's, I would say those are the three main uh, areas of work for, uh, for this year. Then that's for the BDAP part. I will then say a few words about the CDAC being used as follow-up of activities that were previously run on the, on the DIAS. And so that's for a very specific uh, case. That was the common agricultural policy implementation of monitoring requirements and the support to member states with their CDAC uptake. So there was a team in the, in the GRC working specifically uh, on that. So this activity started with the DIAS and continued then on the, on the CDSC. So the first step was to migrate from the DIAS to the CDSC, which has been quite, uh, quite straightforward. But there are some lessons learned also from trying to have this, uh, this type of activities then on, uh, on the CDSC. First, that the uptake really is depending on the internal IT capacity with uh, member states' uh, administration. In that case, that's the call paying, paying agency. So that's one, one point. The cloud expertise is needed, but also the capacity to implement dedicated back-end, front-end functionalities in the sense that even though the capabilities are on the IIS, you need or you, the, uh, here the, this, uh, the, those public administrations need then to have the capacity to, to use it. I mean, it's not something 
that is uh, straightforward. Then, uh, interestingly enough, some of those uh, administrations saw also the, poten the potential of the CDSC and the DAS to take back their contractors' expertise, because most of that work before, and, and, and even still now, is done by contractors of them. And uh, so here, thanks to the DAS or to the CDSC, then the, for some of them, then it was an opportunity to take back the knowledge on that. But then, again, we are back to the previous problem, you need to have the expertise also in-house. So one could say then that using, that's an issue with the IAS, and that using APIs, it will be easier. But that's not necessarily true in the experience uh, that we had, for mainly two reasons. One, that they are not necessarily addressing all the needs, the operational needs of the paying agencies, I mean, that's, that's one. But there is then another one that also, you have the promise for an easy interface, then instead of having IAS or cloud technology uh, knowledge, then you will need to have programming, extensive programming skills. And those are also not necessarily uh, available. So it's not, I mean, all that to say it was not so straightforward then. Then uh, I would uh, move to another part, that is then to just give uh, some feedback on various aspects of the, of the CDSC. So come, and this comes from uh, various uh, users at, uh, at the GRC. So the, ver the first one is related to the service uh, availability, where the service has been reliable, as you, we all know and have experienced until uh, a, few, uh, a few weeks ago, as uh, also and Yuri uh, already explained the, the situation at the very beginning this, uh, this morning, so we are confident that this will not happen uh, again, indeed. Then regarding the, the communication, so I mean, there are plenty, plenty of, uh, of documentation on the, on the CDSC, on the documentation space, I mean, on all the websites, it's full of documentation, there are plenty. Sometimes you would even like more, that happens. Uh, but then there are also some issues of uh, inconsistencies. I mean, one uh, clear example was the availability of Sentinel-2 collection one, depending on where you were, what you were reading, uh, you would, it was not always very clear what would have been available. Another point is about the maintenance information that is published on the website, but then that would be really handy to, be a, to have the possibility to subscribe to an alert service so that one can be notified in case of disruption of, of service. This, ser this exists on Creodias, but does not seem to be available on the CDSC uh, public uh, part. The, well, some uh, issues sometimes that the roadmap is not always uh, perfectly, uh, perfectly up to date. And then one point that is regarding the, the issues that, okay, they are not public, which is, I mean, that, that's quite classic and quite usual. But then there is also not the possibility to share them with people. And that's, uh, that's an issue in uh, several teams because one person is, one person is opening the issue sometimes on behalf of the team, but then the feedback uh, comes back only to one, uh, to one person. And this is, uh, this is impairing, um, yeah, that's causing some issues in some uh, work, uh, work processes. The forum could be also an alternative, but I mean, forum and a support ticket is not exactly the, exactly the same. And a minor uh, detail that no email is sent just upon issue creation, but just one there is an, the first answer. So sometimes also you wonder if actually your uh, support request has been correctly sent. Then on a different uh, topic regarding the data access, the, the performance with it, uh, the S3, I mean, performance within the ecosystem, so within uh, is very, very, very good. I mean, and what, from what we have seen, similar to what you have from large players that I will not name, or even better, so it's, uh, that's very nice. But 
on the that's from within. Then from outside, the experience we had is that it's not uh, performing as well as um, other competitors when you want to access the data from outside. Also, some uh, some experience uh, we had is uh, that loading, speaking with GDAL, but GDAL being one of the most uh, used uh, software, open source software for uh, data access, uh, that if you, you want to request one, <coughs> uh, one bond or that you download the whole product, the difference of time is not big, I mean, not as least as what you would expect. So we'll uh, make some more tests uh, using the CDAB uh, test uh, suite. And uh, one, there is also one comment regarding the Goofies <coughs> that has been added as alternative to S3FS, but they seem that there are some buckets where it's not, uh, it's not working, and there is nothing that uh, could be found in the documentation. So one, some feedback also about, about the data exploration services. So the Copernicus browser is really easy to use, very responsive, and, and as we have seen already in the user survey, I think the result this morning, and people are really, uh, really happy with, uh, with the browser. One uh, comment that we had, that if there was the possibility to better make the distinction between the visualize and the search function so that it's really clear, I mean, may maybe that would be uh, nice. Then some feedback about the, um, the catalog APIs, so on the O data, there are the search has some uh, some limitations when I mean, the examples are, are given here and the stack interface improved but there are still mm, some improvements that are needed and as we have heard I mean the improvements are on their way so we are very very much looking uh, looking forward to, to them and then a few words about the data analysis uh, services I mean Jupyter lab uh, freely available to users, I mean, it's, it's really something that is great, I mean, really, really great. So, I mean, but we would always like to have a little bit more, so would, it, would there be the possibility, for example, to have more server options and even to include some GPUs? I mean, but considering that there is more and more processing now that makes, that, uh, makes use of GPUs, I mean, that could be something really, really nice. And also to have the possibility to use credits to extend the storage and session uh, persistence, as well as extending the session limit that is currently uh, of eight hours. And uh, we found that for some processing it was too short. On, uh, on OpenEO, I mean, that's really great. And as I already said, we intend to see how we can combine local instance of OpenEO with the instance of OpenEO running on the CDSC. Uh, still, we think that it will be useful to have more examples that demonstrate its added value of our conventional processing approaches. In the sense that moving to OpenEO, it means changing your habits. It's important that it be, it's clear that there is really an advantage, I mean, so that maybe some, uh, some examples really that demonstrate why, how easier it is then. And uh, regarding uh, Sentinel Hub, it's just a minor thing, but uh, there are now mosaics at full uh, resolution, but uh, they do not seem to be available via WMS, so it will also be great if, they can, uh, if we can access them via WMS. And with that, uh, I have uh, finished. Yes, I think we still have time for a question or two, maybe from the audience here. Yes. Maybe in the microphone and everybody online can hear you as well. Yeah, um, I just wanted to say the last point that you mentioned, the cloudless mosaic not being available through WMS. It is actually available at full resolution, but, uh, and my colleague Andres has written a whole blog post about it, which is available on, like, it explains how to actually access it through WMS, and um, yeah, maybe he can also give in some input about it.
Yes, they are available at the moment, I think, as a bring your own cog configuration with a specific ID, but that's listed in the in this blog post. They are not directly available as a selectable um, collection if you're preparing a custom configuration, but we can look into that together later. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, I have a question myself. Uh, just, uh, uh, Paul, thank you for uh, very valuable feedback. I think that's very interesting, uh, even more than we received from the uh, survey this morning. Um, I have a question on, on federation. Do you intend to federate towards the CDSE in the future with the data that you have in, uh, in GRC? Y uh, in with, with OpenEO, for example, eh, we have this option of federating in the future towards the CDSE with specific data sets and so on. No, that I don't think that we have uh, we have specific data set that then in the sense that we would provide. No, that, that's we don't we do not have a specific data set for that. I don't think that this would really work that way. Our uh, idea was more to be able to rely on our in-house capabilities for what we have in terms, for example, in terms of data. And then when we do not have the data, typically, then we rely on OpenEO, on the CDSC OpenEO, with its, specific, its own data. Okay. That's the, uh, okay, that's clear. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.